This is the problem we're dealing with. We hurt. We human beings feel pretty unfairly treated. Because we are born into a world so arranged that the price that we pay for enjoying it, that is to say, for having sensitive bodies, is that these bodies are at the same time, because they are sensitive, capable of the most excruciating agonies. Isn't that a nasty trick to play on us? What are we going to do about it? This is the problem. So then when the Buddha says, the cause of suffering is desire, Trishna is our word thirst, and may be translated desire in a very general sense, or perhaps better craving, clinging, grasping, something like that, he is saying, now, I'm going to make this suggestion. You suffer because you desire. Now, supposing then you try not to desire and see if by not desiring, you can cease from suffering. Or you can put the same thing in another way. You can say to a person, it's all in your mind. There is nothing either good or ill, but thinking makes it so. And therefore, if you can control your mind, you've nothing else that you need control. For example, you don't need to control the rain if you can control your mind. If you get wet, it's only your mind that makes you think it's uncomfortable to be wet. A person who's got good mental discipline can be perfectly happy wandering around in the rain. You don't need a fire if you've got good mind control because if you've got ordinary bad mind control, when it gets cold, you start shivering. That's because you're putting up a resistance to the cold. You're fighting it. But don't fight it. Relax to the cold. In other words, this is a matter of mental attitude, and then you'll be fine. Always control your mind. This is another way of approaching it, you see. Now then, as soon as the student begins to experiment with these things, he finds out that it's not so easy as it sounds. Not only is it very difficult not to desire, not only is it very difficult to control your mind, but there's something phony about the whole business. And this is what you're intended to discover. That when you try to eliminate desire in order to escape from suffering, you desire to escape from suffering. You are desiring not to desire. In other words, I'm not merely playing with logic. I'm saying that a person who is escaping from reality will always feel the terror of it. It'll be like the hound of heaven that pursues him. And he's escaping in a way, even when he's trying not to escape. By making the experiment not to desire or the experiment to control your mind thoroughly, this is the first step. To understand this, you must go through that or some equivalent of it. So as to come to the point where you see you are involved in a vicious circle. That in trying to control your mind, the motivation, the reason for which you were doing it, is still clinging and grasping. There is still self-protection. There is still lack of trust and love.